Hi everyone, welcome to this little tutorial where we're going to pop a little background into our husky pup. Now there's a little precursor to this video so um, if you haven't watched this I'm going to pop it up a little link up in the corner there. Watch that one first. Um, this is what we've just been doing anyway. What I've done is just demoed a few different methods and uh, materials on drafting film just to show you know, different effects and the fact that you can add liquids as well. So what we've done, we've done pan pastel, we've used both sides and we've also on there used um, a, a putty eraser just to lift off and create some texture. We've used watercolour pens down here and added water. We've used watercolour pencils up here um, on one side um, and just added water. And we've also used inks and also pit pens and then just move the pigment around whilst it was still wet rather than adding solvent. So you can see they all give different effects. Um, the Pampa style we have worked both sides. Uh, the pit pens we did work both sides as well. So you can see what a lovely muted effects that you can achieve. Um, the Pampa style gives a lovely flat effect and the white pastel even just rubbing that over just gives your film a little bit more opacity so a little bit more um, not you know non takes away the translucency and almost that filmy haze that you get it gives it some substance I guess after doing all of this I was originally going to come in with do my pampa style background just give my little pup a little bit of a pampa style background but I've decided I love the effect of the watercolour pens now that they've dried it's really soft I want something really soft nothing to detract too much and something that is not textured at all pampa style if I left it without using the eraser it would be soft but I actually love the translucency of the watercolour pens and how they've blended together so that is what the method I'm going to use here today now you can use any watercolour pens. Um, I've got the Faber Castell Albrecht Jura pens. Um, they are lovely. I know they're not cheap, so not everyone will have them, uh, but they are beautiful and they come in a, um, the same matching colours as you get with the rest of the Faber Castell range. So they would match your polychromos. And they're great for underpainting as well. Um, they would work well for underpainting the actual dog. And again, you can use your slice tool as well to then create fur. I might actually do a little tutorial or a little piece on um, never tear um, using these because I'm struggling with pit pens at the moment, being able to blend them as much because um, I'm having a reaction with solvents. Um, so these are a great option because, let's say, they match the colours and then we can use our same pencils over the top to create fur texture. So what I'm going to do... I literally come in, um, just going to try and figure this out, let's have a look back at our sample. Our sample we use, what we used was um, the cobalt green up in this area here and then we went in with a touch of our dark indigo and we added a little bit of indanthrin blue as well. But as you can see it all blends together and I used the tissue to lift some off as well. So I'm just looking to see where I might want this a little bit more turquoisey. I think I'm going to put it behind his fur because it's going to really look beautiful. So I'm going to put some up around here and some just down here, almost like a diagonal. And then we'll blend it all up into um, a soft phase out. So literally all I'm going to do is going to come in and just lay down little touches of pigment. And I've got to be really careful, obviously, around the... Um, back of the dog's head itself. I don't want to be going up and I might have to come in with the knife actually over the top and just texturize out into into the background from you know just to create the fur texture again. So we're not gonna be able to avoid not having to do that at all. If we worked on the back we possibly would but even so we'd have to be very careful around that outside edge. Okay, so I'm going to pop in some of the dark indigo now as well. This will just all mix together really nicely. So don't worry too much about the application, that looks a bit scary, doesn't it? <laughs> Um, and then we're going to pop in some of this lovely indanthrin blue as well. And I might just add a little touch of 
warm grey. I want to create a nice, literally a hint behind, um, a little hint behind his head, but it's probably going to be pretty much all watered down to be honest. That's pretty much all of the um, pigment I'm going to put down. So next, just picking up a brush, taking off most of the water, and then we'll come in and just start to move some of this pigment around. So let's come up here first, and all I'm doing is just moving this around, and blending it out. So I'm kind of like wiggling my brush. Activating the pigment really. Be careful as we come in over the edge of the dog itself. Remember, I can lift anything away with the tissue as well. Edges. but what you don't want either is not to go up to the edge because you'll get that horrible halo by halo I just mean sometimes when you see people put down um, the background at the end of a piece they're afraid to go up to the edge and so you get this ring around the outside and it is just like a halo so you see there I've gone right in Touch more water. So I don't want this to be very bright around the face itself. Picked up a little hair there, let me take that away. And this dries a lot lighter. From where we did the little experiment, it dried a lot lighter. And also, like I said, I'm going to come in with the tissue in a second and lift some of the pigment away. And that will create a nice little bit of texture. But see how quickly, imagine if you're doing this with pencils. See how quickly, it, pan pastels would be just as, well, probably not as quick. Um, I do like that. Just finishes him off, just gives him that little bit of soft background. I do like it. Okay, let's just finish this bit off here and then we can come in before it dries too much and lift, almost rag roll it with our tissue. There's enough liquid left up here for me to be able to come in. There. Okay, so quickly, 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 I'm going to tear up some tissue. Just want to create a little bit of a bunch underneath and then just come in and just start to lift some of this away. And that will soften that up really nice instantly. There you go. Now, I don't want to get it all samey samey, so let me just tear another piece of tissue off. Again, just scrunch that up as well. Mm -hmm. 
that has created such a lovely effect. It's like almost like created like a painterly effect on that background using that. Um, without the fear, I, I, I'm nervous of using anything like um, watercolours, but watercolour pencils, watercolour, those pens, just, and I'm going to move that around a little bit there, it's just giving a little bit of a fixed line, I'm just clean off as much water as I can, just could give me a little bit of a fixed line there, Let me just soften that, there we go, anywhere else, I, I love it, I love the effect, just soften that bit there, and then I'll just roll that with the tissue again. I'm not sure if we want to bring in any more pigment. I'm actually really enjoying the effects. Make sure I've just come up over that edge for when we lay our mount down. Let's take this right up to the edge as well. I know it doesn't leave me much space for getting a mount on there. That's my fault for not cutting the paper. Big enough to start with. Lovely. I'm so pleased. It's so almost instantaneous. Um, the effect. Love it. And you can go back in and add some more pigment if you wanted. This is going to dry um, and I'll pop the scan of the, um, or photo of the dried image up at the end. Whilst I've got that there, what I will do as well is just make sure that any little texture has Take that away. We can wait till it's dried to do that as well. But to be honest, it has gone right up to the edges really nicely um, without causing a problem. Let's say it will soften a little bit as it dries. making sure there's a little bit of bleed, a tiny little bit around that edge. And what I'll do is I'll just come in with my pencils very quickly over the top as well and make sure that we've eliminated. I actually like the bleed. I actually quite like the effect. But let's just try and eliminate it and go for that more realistic dog sitting in front of the background effect. to grab one grey four is there to hand. Let me sharpen that one up. Actually, nougat. Yeah, nougat is much better. Let me grab my nougat. That is nice and sharp. And all I want to do is literally just come round. Soften any edges. Any little whiskers. That's fine. You can see this is all drying already. So if you want a super, super quick way of adding a really nice effect 
bit of background in there. I just think I need the blade on there a tiny bit. Come around here with. I'm going to bring in. Actually, I might bring in my dark, one of my dark greys, just to come around this edge as well. There is my dark sepia. Just a few little lines, just to strengthen that edge, just to lay a few hairs over the top of the background, basically that. So all this is to do is just to break through any bleed that might be there. I, I, I can't really see a lot, and what I do see I actually like, but that's just to strengthen up that edge. And you can come in here again if you wanted with your knife again. I'm so, so pleased with that. It's like a finished picture now. I, I looked at him earlier, I pulled him out and I thought, do you know what? And then I remembered that you guys had asked for a quick demo of putting a background in, some ideas. And I hope that is given a really nice um, idea for you. So I'm going to leave our little guy there. It's a little girl, actually. Um, bluey. <laughs> Uh, so thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed that little video, uh, don't forget to subscribe down the bottom and obviously give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.